with puppies at my feet, a snoring old dog, bear wandering around, and a big puppy coming in and out at the door the whole time. I'm cooking some, stewing some rhubarb. And this is what it comes as from the supermarket or the farmer's market or the shop or your local garden. It comes in these lengths. And I chop the top part off. This is this top part, the leaves. As well as I get rid of the kind of uh, papery bit at the bottom. So I chop the bottom bit, the part that is, you, that's pulled from the ground. So I chop it to, what is that? About a knuckle length is the length that I chop it. I sometimes add in ginger, this is a bit of ginger, and I peel it and then dice it to about that size. So um, I get a stew pot like this, good old Le Creuset that I don't even know. I think it might have been a wedding present to my parents. It's that old. So I put um, the uh, stew, sorry, what is this stuff called? Rhubarb. See, I'm not really a professional cook. I am just a farmer. So, and there's growling happening underneath here. Oh, look. She's taken up to chewing her dustpan brush. That's, that, yeah, that was her toy as a puppy. She chewed one right away, for those of you who remember. Anyway, I put in all the diced rhubarb and little diced bits of ginger into the stew pot. And then I will add some just old-fashioned soft dark brown sugar. I'm partial to brown sugar over caster sugar. That's just my, um, the white sugar. That's just my preference. I suppose I like black sheep as well. Uh -huh. I like those dark, dark colors. So I then add in, now I tend to not put in a huge amount of sugar because I like the sharpness that is in the rhubarb. But some people, you've got to break up brown sugar by the way. You're gonna pump it. To loosen it. Um, so that is, I, I, I tend to not over sugar it, but some people might like more sugar in it. So uh, I'm going to cut that up in a minute, but what I normally do is I take it, this is the hot plate, pick that up, put that in there, and literally, I am just going to put a splash of water because that's only so that the bottom doesn't burn because it'll only be on the hot plate for a short period of time uh, till, till it gets going. And then I'll put the lid on and put it on the simmer plate or I'll put the lid on and put it in the top right hand oven, the simmer oven to let it stew for a period of time. But uh, what I'm gonna do is put the phone down and uh, chop up this second half of rhubarb to add it so that I'll have a big lot of um, stewed rhubarb, which I love. And I'm still surrounded by puppies and a snoring dog. I'll show you the next uh, phase of what I do with the stewing of rhubarb, which I love is another real comfort food. Stewed rhubarb with ginger bits in it, and then when it's hot, you top it off with a dollop of sheep's milk yogurt. Absolute heaven. Okay, you can see it's bubbling away now. So I'm now going to take the kettle off of this one, draw it over to here put this lid down the kettle back and it's already slowed down and it's simmer so I put in all the other stuff as well uh, the extra rhubarb so that I'll then put the lid on that in a minute but all this stuff here okay it came from the shops so 
I save the rubber bands. The rubber bands will be used for other things. The ginger obviously will be saved for another occasion. But all this detritus that um, is left over of the rhubarb goes into my hen bucket. You can see there's rind of cheese. There's old olives I found at the bottom of the refrigerator. These are the ends of pop purple broccoli. But all of this is going to go to the chickens to give them some extra food. So this is what happens with all my um, vegetable and fruit and cheese scraps. Is goes into the chicken bucket that goes to the hens. So the rubber bands are saved. That's used for another day. And this is purpling away beautifully. I think I'll give that a stir. Yeah. Beautiful. Giving that a stir. I'll put the lid on it and then I'll put it in this oven here. So this uh, rhubarb is really purpling away beautifully. So I've put the lid on it. And beneath me are all these puppies playing with a dustpan brush. So into the oven it goes where it will slowly stew for the next hour or so. Now I've got to put the lid back down on this and uh, to preserve the heat. So this is another use of the aga. Oh, and something. This, the top of the Le Creuset, I don't know if you saw, has a big crack in it. And it's probably because the floor, this floor used to be cement. But you can still see the history here of the ash bucket. The ash bucket would be set on the floor and it would melt the rings. You can see the rings. And you used to open this here. Gotta move the puppy out of the way. That was where you used to take the coals out. There you can see it's still ignited, the fire. But you used to take the coals out of there and there'd be an ash bucket sitting on the floor here that you'd fill up and then you'd take that outside. So this linoleum floor is really, really old. I'd say it's... Uh, the cement floor that was here when I was growing up was replaced sometime in the mm, 1980s, I think. So this ancient non-cork floor is a, a linoleum that's very old that still has the traces of history in it. I took the uh, rhubarb out of yoga. You can see it's, you can see all the juice, huge amount of juice that's in there. Sometimes I choose to leave that, and sometimes I do another little trick. Um, oh, well, to sweeten it a little bit more, using a little bit of desiccated coconut again. Again, this is, you know, organic desiccated coconut. And then um, jumbo oats, Killebeggin's jumbo oats. And what this does is, just a handful, is you stir it in and the oats will soak up a lot of the juice and it adds a little bit of uh, substance to the um, rhubarb because the, maybe I'll add a little bit more oats. There we go. Because it makes it a delicious dessert. Now this is when I'm not making it into a, a rhubarb crumble. If I was making it into a rhubarb crumble, I'd want all the juice and everything in it. Anyway. So now I'm going to put it back in this oven here so that uh, it can continue stewing right there. Oh, and the lid. I've got to put the lid on. Oh, the lid's hot. You can see I'm not a professional cook. I use cracked lidded stuff. So that, now that's going to stew some more in there as dogs continue to fight over a dustpan brush under my feet. Isn't that right, Inca? Inca! Oh, look at all the puffy faces! Yeah! Aren't you puffy faces?
Mm -mm -mm. This is good stuff. Might not look like much, but I can't tell you how delicious this is. And the only thing that it needs on top of it is a little bit of wonderful velvet clad stuff. There we go. Could do with a bit more. So maybe I'll have to spoon it out. I've nearly finished this pot. But luckily, Velvet Cloud, if you're living in Ireland, they will, you can buy it online now and they will send it to you. So I have a good supply of this delicious yogurt now. Anyway, this is what I was making and it's absolutely delicious. Yum, 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 yum.